Hello, Adrian. Really nice to see you. I'm very happy to, to talk to you about storytelling today. Exciting. Well, I'm very excited to be here. I'm so pleased that uh, we found each other. We can offer this amazing experience for people who need a little bit of wind under their wings. To tell <laughs> story. Exactly. Could you please tell you know, a few words about yourself, uh, who you are and what you're doing? Sure. So my name's Adrian Beckingham, although I have another name that I'm much better known by, which is the man from Story Mountain. Um, I created the business, The Man from Story Mountain, in the early 1990s, uh, really 1993, 1994, and uh, from there just took off a small, you know, sole trader wanting to be a storyteller. Um, it's not actually a profession that I chose. It chose me, to be fair. I had uh, newly arrived in England because I was brought up in Australia. And I was looking for some employment opportunities using words because that is my main skill and tool. I was trying to work for libraries and publishers and an old man who was a storyteller in his 70s, and I was in my 20s then, he said, you want to be a storyteller? Actually poked me in the chest and said, you're going to be a storyteller like this. I said, no, I'm not. Well, he was right and I was wrong. And um, I started there with one client which was English heritage. And well, we're now nearly 30 years later. I've spent that whole 30 years with my only profession being storytelling and also the writing of books. Wow. And also I write a lot in the media on occasion. I have bursts of journalism going on. Yeah. Um, but I've had lots of clients. I've had an amazing three decades where my profession has taken me around the world more times than I can count and I've been to every Glastonbury Festival since 1994 as a paid performer. It's a fabulous experience to be at the biggest festival in Europe as um, a, a paid member of their crew. Um, everything from the British Museum to uh, the National Trust to Her Majesty's Prison Service, uh, working in that case only with uh, people who have actually committed the crime of murder and they're repeat offenders and I take storytelling in to help them find their vision and their new path. Um, I do a lot of corporate storytelling these days. In fact, uh, just two years ago, I was hired as a, a communications officer, which is just all about words, really. That's all talking to people as well um, by a company that is, you know, worth about a billion pounds on so they're a big company and they've put me in charge of their communications by word. So it's all yeah. exciting and there's all awesome. sorts of different areas your business can go into, anybody looking to do a business. Storytelling yeah. will really help engage your potential clients. Awesome. Definitely. I think you are the first person that I know who is a full-time storyteller <laughs> who is doing that for so many years. So you, you really... <clears throat> You have a black belt, if I can say, say it like that, in, in, in words and in, in articulating stories and, yeah, and bringing those stories out um, of people who need that, you know, assistance. And um, what do you think makes a good storyteller or what, what are those, what is it, you know, about communication and, yeah, bringing our message out there in an efficient way what 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 is the secret why some people uh uh have it very easy and and some have a lot of struggle with this okay well i think there, there's maybe you could break it into two main groups and i'll tell you which group i'm in so there's a group of uh people who are maybe very fortunate in that they have like a big agent or a big platform supporting them. And those people, they may be able to have very high quality work, but in my view, they could also have not so high quality work and still do extremely well if you're just talking about exposure and potentially finances as well. That's one group. And then you have the other group of people like myself. I don't have an agent. I've never had an agent. I create all my own connections and all my own gigs and all my own projects so i have no agent 
I have many different publishers and uh, more recently, in recent years, I've got into self-publishing. So that's me even being more out there on my own. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the first group and you've got a big platform with lots of funding behind you, then potentially you're not even engaging in this workshop because for the rest of us, we're needing to swim in a creative and really uh, powerful way. And it's how do you do that? So what makes a person a good storyteller? What makes a person a bad storyteller? Let's talk about that. A bad storyteller, maybe they have no passion or maybe they have too much passion and they're talking the heads off everybody in the room. So yeah. there's a balance of empathy. You need to have some empathy with your audience or your potential client. You know, one thing I think that has really carried me everywhere I've gone, and as I say, every gig I've had, every project I've worked on, every country I've been paid to travel to and sit with Indigenous peoples learning their stories is a really high honour. I have created myself, and it is through having an empathic understanding that we're all just people and your potential client is just a person. And if you're able to offer some empathy in how you relate your message to somebody. So don't put it down their throats because that's not empathic. Also, don't not share it with them because you're too nervous. If you're feeling nervous that you're going to be rejected, how long is that going to go on for? What are you going to do to change that nervousness? So you don't want to be too shy and you also don't want to be too forward and out there in the majority of settings so it's having that empathy yeah there's experience as well so they do say talk about what you know about so you know I tell the stories of the places I've been to and I've spent over 20 years uh traveling around different cultures and doing storytelling exchanges yeah. um but it's it's about listening as well so I don't usually go somewhere to another culture and tell them stories. That's exactly what I do do, but I don't go somewhere and tell them stories without also receiving some of theirs. And then I have something to go away with. I've learned a new story. I've learned two new stories from that culture. By the time I leave, they've received stories from me, but I've also received from them. Yeah. Um, there is an exchange, and actually I am the one being paid because this is my career. They may have also been paid to. It depends, of course, on circumstance. The important thing, though, is not to just chase money. I think if you just chase money, you'll always be dissatisfied. If you're chasing experience, if you're chasing enrichment, then when I walk away and I've learned two new stories and they've received stories from me, everybody's happy. Now, that works for any product. So when you've got your product and you're excited about it, and we know we're talking here to an audience of people who aren't stuck with writer's block, they're not stuck with, oh, my God, I'm halfway through that painting and now I can't paint anymore. We're talking to guys right now in this video who they're all winners. You're all winners. You're here, you've created your products and you're wondering what to do next. Remember you're a winner. And I do like to say to people, in my live audience as well. Do you know why we're definitely all winners? Because we're all here. We're not just here at this video, but we all beat actually, to be frank, billions of sperm to be the winner, to hit that egg, to get that line. <laughs> so we're already winners. Yeah. How do we make the person you're selling a product to understand they're going to be more of a winner if they buy your painting? What's that painting going to do for them? Yeah. You always have to have that empathy. And I'd say that's part of a good storyteller is speak of your experience, talk of the things you know best, whether that's, you know, something you've done in your life, it's a product you've got, you know your product and have the confidence, don't push it down someone's throat, but don't be shy and be friendly, respectful and empathic and you'll do okay. Yeah, I love it what you said about listening as well that it's actually it's a it's a constant feedback loop because we are connected you know and 
and it's about sharing and also listening and then developing further our story. It's really nice. Have you uh, ever worked with creatives, with artists or, or designers? Um, because from my experience working as a coach uh, with artists, um, I see that some of them have this struggle of being uh, introvert and a little bit shy. And this has to do also with um, uh, vulnerability, you know, mm -hmm. and, and connecting. I, I see it like that, connecting with themselves. And what, uh, how, how do you see that? What are some of the things that can help a really shy artists to open up more and to, to have more courage to bring, bring their message? And instead of just saying, this is my painting, and I'm going under the table and let the painting speak for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'd all love to be able to do that, wouldn't we? And, you know, there's people creating the most fabulous paintings, for example. Um, there's musicians creating the most fabulous music, authors writing the most fabulous books that never get seen and Good never point. are received. And, there's, of course, a difficulty uh, if you have created something that you're passionate about and it's come out of you and you're trying to show it to the world. And understandably, there's, there's, there's a natural instinct to be nervous because no one wants to be rejected. I think it's very, very important for people to remember. Um, I'm not particularly a Buddhist, OK? I, I do uh, I tell stories from a lot of different religions, and I think religions are responsible for some bad things in the world, but also they carry some teachings. And here's a teaching for you about getting out there. And it's just a simple rule, the Buddhist rule, if you like, of appreciation. So it's so important, I believe, to be in an energy of appreciation. So when you've painted that amazing painting, and you're pleased with it, you go, yep, yeah, I've finished painting that now. You can either go into an energy of trying to get it out there, maybe you're too shy, or maybe you're down everyone's throats either way, they don't want to know about it, they don't receive it, because you're engaging in the wrong way. However, if you're doing that, then you're not in a space of appreciation and gratitude for this wonderful painting you've been given a space to create. Yeah. You're in an energy of frustration and that can become anger because the world's not receiving me and I've made this fantastic painting. <laughs> yeah. right? Do you know where yeah. that's going to get you? That's going to get you not very yeah. far and yeah. definitely in the wrong direction. So it's really good to keep our emotional core centred and our mind focused and go, I've made this beautiful painting. I think it's brilliant. Maybe the rest of the world, there's going to be someone out there who thinks it's terrible. And there's going to be someone out there who also thinks it's brilliant. Of course. Uh, now, for that person who thinks it's brilliant, I want them to buy it. Yeah. How do I get them to buy it, you know? Well, how do you put yourself forward as an individual? Other people want to buy your art because they're not just attracted to your painting, they're attracted to you as a person. And yeah. they're actually saying, I want you on my wall. Your art is a representation of the human being, the spirit that created this artwork. I love it. Yeah. You know? I love and it. And so it's very important to be in that appreciation and to be in that gratitude. And if you're someone who is shy or too forceful, it's great you're watching this interview between us two, uh, you folks out there, because this is what this is about. We're going to give you some tools. If you come back and do the, the proper workshops, we're going to be giving you the tools we're going to be actively going through the tools with you that I know work um, I have worked with creatives for over 20 years I am at this moment working actively with three different creative professionals on three different projects um, so that's me one-on-one -on -one, but at three different projects at the moment um, however, there are times when I'll be working with 20 or 30 different creative people and we're putting on a great big theatre show, for example, at a festival or yeah. whatever it is. Awesome. I love, I just love what you said about being grateful and appreciative of our own work. And that's so much yeah. to do also with self-love, you know, we Absolutely. are amazing. And mm -hmm. for many people, it's actually difficult 
to to fully embrace that self appreciation and self love and this is where it starts from and i also wanted to mention in regards to our amazing uh master class our workshop um that i also go i'm also going to share how i uh, sold my painting recently and i have to say that uh, 50 percent of all those secrets that, that that i'm going to share about of my own process of selling art has to do also with storytelling uh, i would not have been able to sell that work without my story because that was that emotional connection um, that connected me with my buyer you know and um, in a very unexpected way just because i was sincere as you said appreciative of my own work i i mm -hmm. fell in love i fell in love with my own work and then by sharing that uh, positive energy i attracted the client mm -hmm. immediately and that's so beautiful so another thing i wanted to ask you uh, is about drama because i know that every story has like you know a culmination events um uh, this is what captures the attention of the audience right in the story because it's not flat there is something happening so do you believe that uh, as a painter or as somebody who makes sculpture or maybe a designer do i need to have some drama in my story or or you think it's not necessary i can just create beautiful things enjoy life and show that beauty to the to my audience what's your take on this well i think it depends partly on where do you as the artist want that painting to go so if you want that painting to be commercial maybe you have to look at what story is going to be in there and the story will be a connection in some way to life won't it it could be a reflection of you know city streets at night to pick this one random example and what do you feel about these city streets at night and that's your painting and other people will see that so there you do have a story and you've got a hook if you like that will be relating what that story is about but then of course there's other art that is just for its own sake and if you're doing art for its own sake what a beautiful thing to do when we're talking about it not all being about finances but also being about um, your own appreciation and your sense of self-worth and what you're just giving to the world as in not selling but giving to the world what you're creating from yourself then that can be anything and it yeah. can be any narrative can't it now, I believe everything's got stories. So even the painting or the sculpture or the piece of dance or music that people look at it or hear it, they say, I don't know what that's about. Well, that's fine because the arts are there to explore humanity in the world around us and circumstance, the environment, and bear a thread of relationship between us as human beings and society and culture. That's yeah. basically what all arts are doing in one way or another. And it's fine, whatever your narrative is. But it, I think, you know, if you want it to, if you want to bang out lots of paintings and sell them, then unless you're very good at your own marketing, which we're going to help people get better at their own marketing, um, unless you're very, very good at it and you're banging out lots of paintings, and some of them are going to sit around for a while, unless. You know, here's a blatant example of an obvious story is let's say we all go to Glastonbury, right? A sort of spiritual mecca in the UK. Lots of tourists, maybe not so much as we're in lockdown, but a very thriving industry of, of uh, you know, holistic energy and um, exploration of spirit, etc. If you sat in that town and you painted the tour at the bottom of the track, I'm sure you could sell a lot of those paintings as people walk past. They'd love to buy a painting off an artist who sat on the path at the bottom of the tourist attraction they've gone to see. Okay. You say, you said, then you're, you're connecting your narrative to something very obvious and you're being very commercial. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's beautiful. The connection with uh, with uh, our audience and the ways how we can be creative 
also in regards to places and events where our story also fits in. We definitely have to touch this also during the workshop. So I think just... sorry, I was going to say, um, I think another very important thing is what makes your narrative stand out from others, what makes your work unique and why would people therefore be interested in it. So if I drop in a couple of examples, because I always try to make what I'm doing unique, and that's hard because nearly everything's already been done, right? Yeah. How do you make it unique? So um, mentioning some of my books, so my best-selling book stories that crafted the earth is, to my knowledge, um, the only anthology of tribal earth creation stories that's ever been published. And so these are all stories about people sat around campfires talking about how the trees were made, how the stars were made, where the first people came from. And these stories, the youngest story is 5,000 years old in that book. And the oldest story is 45,000 years old. And I spent about oh. 10 years traveling around researching these stories. I didn't plan to have a book. I just wanted to tell the stories to audiences. And then actually I was storytelling at Frankfurt Book Fair, the biggest book fair in the world, which had hired me in just to tell my stories. I wasn't even an author yet. And someone heard me tell one of those stories. I said, wow, have you got a book of those? Or actually they said, yeah. do you know any more stories? I said, well, I, yeah, I've got about 50 of them. So basically it's making something unique yeah stands I, out i like mm -hmm. uh i like what i usually say to myself and also to my clients uh create the things you wish existed because uh, exactly. as a highly creative people we have this ability to be very observative good listeners and and notice what is not there yet actually i have it all the time mm -hmm. and be proactive and create those things we wish existed and also leave legacy and um and you know i'm thinking about writing my my first book and how i oh, think right. about it yeah i'm thinking about it from that perspective if I had a daughter and if something, you know, happened to me, what kind of book I would like to write for her so that mm -hmm. um, we never know, you know, how much we have left. What would they, <laughs> what message, what message would they like to pass to her? And this, this inspires me to, to write that first book. So impact, wow. well, yeah, impact. We, we didn't touch the topic of making an impact, but I think that it's all interwoven in our conversation because as, as easier we are able to connect to our audience, as more impact we can make through our work because, I mean, we need to connect in order to sell that amazing book and to, you know, deliver our message. And so we are going to share tools with you when you join our uh, mastermind session on 10th of April, uh, we will look into your story, you know, through the homework that you will get from us. So when you, um, when you uh, jump in in our experience, I will put, put a link where you can um, join the, the mastermind session, you will get an assignment that will also help us to get to know you better and you will have a personal approach to your situation, to your artwork or design or the book that you're about to write. And uh, so I hope you will join us and I'm very excited about it. And yeah, so I will see you all on 10th of April. And thank you very much, Adrian, for sharing your journey and your valuable tips with us. And you're, you're very, very welcome. I can't wait for the workshop yeah. in April. And also the homework we're giving people is actually kind of like home play. It's going to be, you know, it involves no writing, it involves no computers. This homework is going to be very enjoyable indeed, isn't it, that we're going to give people. And it will be the beginning of their journey into being a better storyteller for their product or service. It's very exciting. Awesome. All righty. I will say bye for now. Thank you. Thank bye you bye. for watching, guys. I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching, everybody. Bye bye. See you soon.